Sashmash. Hello and welcome to season two of the Gay Agenda. Today we'll be looking at Ningguang and Beido and whether or not this ship has any water to float on. As you know, Genshin Impact is a game which likes to hide away its lore. However, nothing can escape our watchful gaze. So let's begin. Number one, they're the Liwei power couple. Ningguang is in charge of the land as head of the Liwei Qixing, and Beidou rules the ocean as captain of the Crux fleet. They even complement each other business-wise. Beidou provides a solid means of importing and exporting goods under the direction of Ningguang's economic strategies, adding to Liwei's prosperity. Simply put, Ningguang is the brain and Beidou is the brawn in this pairing. Beidou is associated with a dragon, as her Chinese title is Uncrowned King of Dragons. And Ningguang is associated with a phoenix, it's her symbol and can be seen on her name card. In turn, these mythical creatures are associated with yin and yang respectively. Yin and yang are complementary forces, one cannot exist without the other. The phoenix and the dragon also hold close ties with an auspicious marriage, as they are often featured on traditional wedding clothes. Actually, they're married. I was there at the ceremony. And their in-game outfits have complementary colour schemes. Gold symbolises wealth and prosperity, and red symbolises good fortune and happiness. So together they are truly unstoppable. Beidou and Ningguang have a whole trailer dedicated to just them in which they flirt outrageously over some tea. Oh, and that porcelain antique? That was a gift from Beidou. And it's painted with a lily. You can even see it in the Jade Chamber. Jade Chamber? More like Gay Chamber. We also get to see Ningguang's secretaries there. Her closest attendants are three women. The Jade Chamber is Ningguang's proudest achievement, so housing her attendants and Beidou's gift there means she holds them in very high regard. In contrast, she keeps all her male suitors at a suitable distance, never desiring a relationship with any of them. Ningguang only gives one birthday gift to Lumine, and two to Ether. She wants the second gift to be sent to Lumine because... Isn't her preference an extra careful woman obvious enough already? Still on the fence? Then explain. Why does Ningguang only leave those two specific fingers free of claws, hmm? Also, Ningguang is the only character to use glazed lilies for ascension, and lilies often symbolise sapphic love. In fact, you've probably already heard of Yuri, the Japanese name for both the lily flower and girl's love. Beidou and Ningguang's ascension materials both only shine in the night. Glazed lilies bloom and Noctilucus jade glows. And the moon which hangs in the night sky is commonly associated with being sapphic. Beidou is themed after a pirate, and female pirates are also commonly lesbian coded. Why is Beidou a pirate, you may ask? Because she stole Ningguang's heart. Contrary to popular belief, Beidou does not fly the skull and crossbones, but instead, a gay pride flag. If not sapphic, why colours of the lesbian flag? Their visions are attached in the same place. And they're both great burst DPSs. So, they beat up homophobes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Also, notice how they're the only two characters to wear hairpins and their hairpins face in opposite directions. In fact, the S shape of Ningguang's hair accessory stands for sapphic. It's true, she told me herself. Notice how once again they fit the light hair dark hair trope? They're both equally tall, which is perfect for staring down on homophobes. Ningguang's constellation is a tool that models the heavens, an armillary sphere. Beidou's name is literally Big Dipper, as in the pattern of the stars in the sky. And Ningguang's government position, Tianquan, is a star within the Big Dipper constellation. Did you know that Beidou stands for being enemies is definitely overrated, unless... While Ningguang means not into nasty guys, girls universally are notably gorgeous. Ningguang and Beidou both have two voice lines about each other, demonstrating their closeness. In fact, Ningguang even thinks about Beidou when the wind blows. It's even speculated that the true leader of the Crux fleet is Ningguang herself. And Ningguang appears to favour Beidou over other people for the dirty work. Specifically Beidou, not the Crux fleet. This is despite Beidou frequently breaking the law. Perhaps she does this so she can have an audience with Ningguang. Beidou states that the consequences are a trifle matter for her, after all. And despite the half with giving out countless fines, Ningguang's attitude towards Beidou never sours. Even Kazuha is fed up with their gay bickering. And Kuching. 
she implies that Ningguang tends to look the other way when it comes to enforcing the law around Beidou. Surely Ningguang could easily find someone more law-abiding to carry out her tasks, yet she always favours Beidou. Ningguang continues giving Beidou special treatment with the construction of three new docks just for her, as can be seen in the North Wharf board. And notice it's signed with Ningguang, not Tianxuan. These are Ningguang's personal orders. For someone that Ningguang appears to hate, Beidou sure lives in her head rent-free. And for someone who claims to not care what Ningguang thinks of them, Beidou sure is mindful to an affection with gifts. Ningguang also prefers to use favours as currency in their relationship rather than Mora, an interesting detail considering she's all about money. The Masterful Chef's cooking competition theme was Of Earth and Water Born, relating to land and sea, which is what Ningguang and Beidou represent. Beidou even said, Our taste couldn't be more different, once again relating to their yin and yang nature. So, for Ningguang to choose a theme that subtly includes them both is actually very thoughtful. Though this heartfelt detail is easy to miss because of their endless old married couple-like bickering. Which culminated in Beidou inviting Ningguang on a cruise date. Ningguang is no stranger to the Alcor. Shang Ling reveals that she has been on board to play chess with Beidou. And this chess game? It's Ningguang's own invention, which most don't even attempt to play. She also frequently changes the rules, but that doesn't stop Beidou from winning. Sometimes. This just goes to show how well she understands Ningguang. And Beidou doesn't do this for any reason but the thrill. No one else in Liyue Harbour dares to bet against Ningguang, so imagine how happy she must be that she finally has someone to play with her. They both have a rags to riches history, so they can find more common ground with each other than you first may think. The only reason Ningguang had to sacrifice her Jade Chamber was because Beidou wasn't around to cut a sile down like she did with Haishan. And the first thing she does after that happens, goes to find Beidou. And the first thing Beidou does after returning from long voyages, go to Ningguang. Beidou truly embodies be gay, do crime with her antics in both Liwei and in Azuma. Ningguang counters with do time at mine. This extends to beyond business hours. Ningguang converts the Jade Chamber into a gay club at night. Yes, they also put their beds together after getting thoroughly wasted. And in the mornings, the hungover homos help detangle each other's hair. Ningguang awakened a masterless vision, and during the Inazuma Prelude quest, Beidou says she considers one who is able to do that to possess exceptional strength and talent. Was this perhaps an indirect compliment? And near its conclusion, Beidou is yet again summoned by Ningguang. This seems to be such a common occurrence that the crew even joke about it. After all, lightning is drawn to earth. Kazaha then swiftly went on his solo trip around Liyue so that Beidou and Ningguang could have some alone time together. Beidou and Ningguang have collectively adopted all of Liyue's stray children. Ningguang is a distinguished gay, and Beidou is a disaster. They're also sun and moon gays. And an introvert and extrovert pair. Look, Ningguang may be a cognitive extrovert, but she's definitely a social introvert. Why do you think the Jade Chamber is so far away from everyone? Ever notice how the girl bosses in Genshin have electro girlfriends? Jean has Lisa, A has Yai, Ganyu has Kaching, and Oz has Fischl. This is obviously because in order to get an electrovision, you must be gay. Or a disaster. Or both. Actually, who are we kidding? Everyone in Genshin is some flavour of fruity. Mihoyo does like their sapphic couples after all. We can clearly see this with their other game, Honkai Impact 3rd. However, due to ever-increasing censorship laws in China, we may only have underlying subtext to go on in the future. Look, Beiguang is canon because I'm a Beidou main and I said so. Even Redditors think there's something going on between them, and it has to take a lot for them to accept anything cis hetent. If not canon, why together in official art? Like here, in the Billy Billy Milestone celebration. And here in the manga. And just look at them being paired up in the gameplay promo video. Oh Ningguang, getting distracted by Beidou's antics while you're meant to be working. And it happens again! Also, please pay attention to the Beiguang slimes. They are affectionate enemies. And friends. And lovers. They are everything. Including the cure for my depression, so it's no surprise they both have recovery dishes as their specialties. And finally, we know that Ningguang has stepped foot aboard the Alcor, so we can safely say that the ship has sailed. AKA, 
Beiguang is canon. Well, the evidence is quite overwhelming, isn't it? So much so that I bet historians would even say they were very good friends. If you are now a passenger on the Beiguang Bateau, then please like, subscribe, and comment to help us spread the gay agenda on YouTube. So until next time, Sashmash out. Now go!